Hello and welcome to a very quick They Prayed It Would Never Happen edition of Mark Fixes Stuff. In this episode we will be looking at the Sinclair Spectrum 128K Plus 2 power supply, uh, an item which very often um, goes pop and fails to work. So you'll often see them uh, not working or if you do a local pickup you'll find them in this kind of state which is really disgusting actually. It's obviously been in a garage or somebody's been sick on it. Look at that. That's dirtier than a prostitute's diary. Ugh. Anyway, um, I'll wash my hands after. Um, shares a lot of characteristics um, with the Plus 3 power supply, including the connector um, and the voltages out. I think the um, the current rating is higher on the Plus 3 power supply, but I haven't actually checked. But this supplies plus 5 volts, plus 12 volts, and minus 12 volts, which would, um, of course, give you a potential 24 volt um, power there. So, um, okay, so Sinclair plus two power supply. Whenever you get any retro at all, the first thing you absolutely must do is you must check the mains plug. Um, not such an issue if you live in the uh, United States of Europe. However, if you live in the UK, you will get one of these plugs. Now, Back when these machines were sold, there was no law saying that you had to have a plug on an appliance. So often, manufacturers wouldn't include them because of an extra cost, and shops wouldn't include them. They'd actually have a service where they would fit it for you. So mums and dads would go home and do it on their own. Um, this is uh, the vintage plug from back then, which is uh, 13 amp with a core grip, uh, conforms to BS1363, all that good stuff. But what you'll often find is through uh, long-term wear and tear and mucking about and not actually being wired up properly in the first place, these are often completely um, poorly put together and in fact dangerous could kill you. So um, we're going to have a quick look inside the plug. So I've got a this uh, power supply was just given to me as not working so I'm not entirely sure what's wrong with it. So screw out the back off. Always turn it up the other way before you take Take the back off. Well, the wiring's not um, particularly clever on this one already. You can see here, oh, gone too far. On the neutral terminal, we've got a lot of exposed wire there. Um, rule of thumb is that, in fact, I might actually do a video called How to Wire a UK Plug Properly, because although all new appliances by law must come with them fitted, molded plugs, a lot of retro stuff doesn't and you can still buy these individually to fit on your retro stuff um yeah that's pretty bad that's exposed copper there um and I'm not sure what that terminal's like so if i just give that a little twist yeah look the screw is completely loose so that's probably going to come yeah look looser i'm not even going to say that i i, I don't want to you get shot, shouted out by sex workers. So <laughs> that's happened sometimes. Actually, you have some Twitter followers who are in that trade, believe it or not. Yeah. Um, right, so that needs to be trimmed off. The rule of thumb of this is these need to be um, cut down until the sheathing is um, square, obviously, because you don't want that going in the hole and not making contact. And this needs to be a single. Um, um, extrusion from there so cut that down and needs to be inside so that none of this copper is exposed and then gripped by the screw let's see what the other side's like okay well the other side of this plug is actually completely wrecked and it said the F word there that's the similar that side that's absolute crap that is oh my god look at all the stray strands 240 volts lovely um, Fuse is probably dead as well. Um, but if you look, the um, the mountain between the live pin and the bit that's meant to you know, connect to the fuse holder is sheared off anyway. So, uh, well, yeah, um, that plug is fit for the bin. Anyway, I'm not going to bore you with me fitting another plug. I'm going to fit a plug successfully. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to checking the internals of the power supply, which is a useful part. Okay, so just pop this to one side and jump cut. Three, two, one.
and you're back in the room. Here we are, okay, back to have a quick look inside um, this unit, still filthy. Um, you can separate the shells on these to give them a good old soapy water wash or stick them in the dishwasher, but don't tell your wife. Um, of course, that would uh, never come out in the video. Darn it. So uh, first thing we're going to do is we are going to turtle it. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention on these, it's always a good idea before you get too deep into the guts of the main unit to have a look at the DIN connector and make sure that all the pins are there and not sheared off. Because sometimes you can find they're completely mashed inside um, because people have tried to poke them in the wrong hole, Vicar. Right, so uh, moving on. That one's fine, by the way. Um, we're going to flip this over. And it's got four screws. I'm using a number one um, cross tip screwdriver here. And we are just going to place it in the hole. Now these are um, self tapping screws into plastic. So do try and be a bit gentle with them. That one's loose now. There we go. One of those. Um, it goes without saying, but I'm loath to not mention it, that obviously don't take a power supply apart after plugging it into the mains and leaving it plugged in and switched on because you're, you're going to get a shock. Um, even if you unplug it and turn it off, proceed with caution because there are still components within this that can give you a nasty old whack. So um, anything you do with the power supply is at your own risk. Myself, Mark, and Mark Fix's stuff take absolutely no responsibility for any death, injury, pants soiling, or anything like that as a result of watching this video. If you saw your pants without actually opening one up, that's a different matter, and I'll send you some new underpants. Right, so all four screws are out, and the top shell can come off. Okay, so inside what we've got is, well, a lot of dirt and dust, actually. I can see the problem already. Um, and some of the eagle eye viewers out there can see the problem as well. The first thing you want to do on this is check the fuses. That's right, I said fuses because there's more than one. The one that you can see here that is so obviously blown is um, F1, fuse one, which is a fast blow uh, 3.15 amp fuse. But there is another and yet you wouldn't be able to see it from here because it's actually under here. So let's just pop these screws out. You wouldn't normally need to take these screws out, but in order to show easily on the camera, oh, that screw it can now be found inside the power supply. Um, I will just take these two mounting screws out. They screw into the top of the uh, aluminium heat sink. Let's grab that other screw while I can see it. Good old magnetized screwdriver, saves the day yet again. Yep, yeah, and you can see there's a fuse here as well. So let me just zoom in on that. And you'll notice that this is a 315 milliamp for T designation, which I believe is a timed delay fuse or a time delay fuse, which means that on inductive loads, i.e. loads that can start quite heavy on power on, it doesn't blow immediately and they're usually um, designed in a sort of a wound fashion. Now, if it's never been changed and on this one it hasn't, then they are often cable tied on with a little groove in the board. I think that's to stop it basically dropping out the fuse holder, although they're quite difficult to get out the fuse holder anyway. Um, so 250 volts, 315 milliamps, that's thousandths of an amp, okay? The one that we've got in here is 250 volts, 3.15 amps. So that's 3.15 amps, not milliamps. Don't get them mixed up, otherwise, uh, you know, you, you'll cause more harm than good. Okay, so uh, yeah, usually it's this one down here, inside. That goes. Check this one as well. If this one's gone, you might have a bigger problem because um, that usually takes a bit more grunt to blow. Um, I've not come across one of these capacitors um, not um, being good enough for the job. Although, if there was another problem, I would look at that, and I would also look at any of these little uh, kiddies in here, um, particularly the diodes, for example. It's a fairly simple beast, right? So. Um, yeah, um, I don't have a spare for that right now, 
But what I am going to do is I'm going to take it out because they're both the same package size and I'll measure it for you. Okay, so jump cut. You can actually remove the board um, separately by just lifting the whole lot out, but I can't bother with all that. Um, okay, so we can see fairly quickly that this is properly blown. And look at that. The telltale signs there. I mean, you don't need to get your meter out and check this one. <laughs> it's gone. It's gone, baby, gone. And here we can see the... Um, let me see if I can get that more into focus for you. The specifications on the fuse. 3.15 amperes at 250 volts. Right, so we'll measure that up very quickly. Zoom out a little bit. By the way, if you did want to bathe the case, all of these bits just pop out um, and you can lift this up and the transformer and everything. It's not actually screwed in any further. It's just um, quite literally sitting in the case and then it's held together when you clamshell and put the four screws in that we took out earlier. So the fuse package is... So that's 20 mil, okay? Um, if you want to check the... In case fitting, five mil. So they're twenty by five. This once again is the um, F three point one five A, twenty by five. And just to clarify that this is the same package size, and the one at the top is a three hundred and fifty milliamp. So that's a T three one five MA. Right. Well, I'm going to put this back together and uh, wait for the spares to arrive. Um, I'll order them up and I'll put the part number down the bottom of this video um, and any addendums if anything else is broken. If you don't see another video about this, assume it fixed it, but um, yeah, I mean, I've done probably, probably about six of these um, and it's usually this fuse, or one time I found one without a fuse in it at all, which was particularly curious. However, anyway, um, just chipping off now. This is Mark from Mark Fixes Stuff, saying subscribe to get your fix. Look out for HypnoCat. Look out for HypnoCat because he says subscribe.